Hi, this is Steve from Conductive Labs, and we just want to talk about our new product, the MIDI Router Control Center, or MRCC. You know, at Conductive Labs, we did the Noodler, and the way we invented that is we just kind of do and uh, invent what we need. We, uh, we needed that uh, device to play our synthesizers for us, and so we made that. And so the next project we're working on is a MIDI router, and we sat back and we said, well, what would be the ultimate router? in our in our music rooms and so that's how we come up with this let's wanted to share a little bit about our design thinking and then walk through some of the features so we kind of reimagined what a MIDI router would be you know we use the modern uh, CPU power that's available now that's very inexpensive but we also have a lot of the old MIDI routers in our studios that we loved that had a one button per jack input and we wanted to merge the idea of having a lot of CPU strength and the flexibility and ease of configuration right on the device and not having to uh, need a PC to do the configuration and this is what we came up with. We're also uh, a little different than maybe you would imagine this would look like because all our jacks are routing the cables straight up the reason why we did this is because we were looking at photos of various routers and we noticed that even if the router had a small footprint on your tabletop, all the jacks come out the back. And when they come out the back, what they don't want to tell you is that, you know, you've got to use up a bunch of table space of all your jacks. If you had a bunch of jacks here, this whole strip is unusable on your desk. When they go straight in the top, now there's no desktop space used at all and you can route the cable any which way you want. Let's talk a little bit about the inputs and the outputs of the device. So on modern devices um, like an SQ1, um, they're using eighth inch jacks and they use these dongles that you plug into the unit and then there's a female five pin. And we decided, well, why worry about these dongles because you're always losing them or mixing up which companies go with which device. So if you just use a standard eighth inch stereo jack, you can plug into the top, which would be a Notorious style, or you can plug into the bottom, which is the Korg style. So if we were to plug our SQ-1 in, that's all we'd have to do. Now, uh, we have 11 inputs, which are the 5-pin, the 8th inch, and the USB. And we have a total of 21 outputs, which are the 12 uh, 5-pin and of course the USB can be used for output as well. And let's just look quickly about how to route this. So let's turn this off like that. And if I were to plug in my SQ1 and I wanted to route it to my synthesizer coming out of um, channel five, let's go ahead and plug that into channel five. What I would do is I would choose my input, which is one, and then I would come over here and just choose five, and now it's routed. I could also send input 1 to any other one. I could send it to 9, 10, 11, or 12. In fact, I even have a button here I could just route it to all of my outputs. So it's very quick and easy. Now if I had another device, let's say I had a device uh, like an Akai uh, controller, you know, one that typically only has USB, I could use this USB cable which would come out of the Akai and instead of plugging it into my computer, plug it into this host port. Now this is host port one, so let's route to this one. So my output is on five to go to my synth. I can also choose uh, port one and route it to five. Now, uh, notice that you didn't have to do anything about merging uh, because the merging takes care of itself. All you need to do is concern yourself with what input you're plugging in and where you want to route it to. So that's basically how we configure this. There are uh, other things such as filtering and uh, routing and such, and that all happens on the uh, OLED display here with the navigation knobs and the encoder. You may have noticed that this screen just turned over to a different screen, and what that screen is telling us now is um, where the routings are. You can see that this uh, the input A is routed to uh, output 5 there, and input 1 is routed to everything. So if I go back to input 1, you'll see it's routed to everything, and input A just to 5. That's a brief overview of the uh, MRCC um, inputs and outputs. Let's talk a little bit more about the 
the configuration. We will sell this as a desktop model, which will sit just like this in an aluminum case and have a user interface that's similar in style to the Noodler. And uh, we will also sell this as a 2U 19-inch rack, rack uh, mountable device. And uh, there's something a little special because, you know, <clears throat> we like to have the configurability of having the jacks uh, right here on, in front, easy to see where the buttons line up directly with the out inputs and outputs. But folks often talk about needing jacks on the back of the unit. And so we, you know, because we make and design what we want, we, we certainly have the same, the same request. So we came up with this thing called the uh, MIDI CC remote. And we're going to be using a single uh, Ethernet, grounded Ethernet cable. And so with this optional remote, you can plug it into the side of your MRCC. And what happens is the first seven outputs get routed and uh, to the back unit. And they're actually hot on both the front and the back. So if you route something to one, it will be available here as well as here. And so... If you, have a, if you have a rack, you could put this in the back of your rack and leave this on your desktop. Or you can mount this on your rack and also have this in the back of the rack so you can have basically rear um, jacks. That's an overview of the MRCC. We um, hope that uh, the design decisions we made uh, resonate with you as they do with us and uh, support us on Kickstarter and... Um, uh, we'll get this thing out as soon as we can, and thanks for watching.